So, uh, canvas. Canvas. We're talking about canvas today. So yeah. this is definitely a bite size. Yeah. Because there's not much that I could tell you about canvas. About canvas. Robbie's tips for artists because he loves you. Hola, you amazing artist, and welcome to a bite size with Ralph and Club. That was a good announcer voice. Thank you. Thank you. I, I worked on it. I didn't hear you working on it. Do you work on it you in your know, mind's eye? You don't know eye? everything I do. I don't give you a play-by-play. -play. In your mind's ear? Of my mind. Mm. We have a cool question from Andy who watches our YouTube videos, and Andy's website is braintwinge.com. Braintwinge.com. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hello. I've been watching your channel for a while, and I love the message you put out into the world. I've been painting for a while, but I'm sort of a newbie, and I've got a question. I've been told that stretching your own canvas is better than buying pre-stretched canvases. Why is this? Is this just an art thing, an art thing? Or are there practical reasons why stretching your own canvas is beneficial to buying pre-stretched canvases? I think it's a little bit of both. Because obviously, if you are pre-stretching your own canvas, then you are making it from the get-go and you know exactly what materials are being used in that canvas. Whether or not it's better to stretch it yourself or to buy pre-stretched canvas all comes down to what kind of pre-stretched canvas you are buying. The other factor that is involved is pricing. So for example, I do buy pre-stretched when I'm buying the smaller ones because um, I don't want to waste my time. Because that's a lot of work for like... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once it gets over 30 by 30, I tend to stretch it myself because it's way cheaper and shipping uh, pre-stretched canvas is is a pain in the butt. So Indeed. Yeah, and even if you go to the store and you try to buy pre-stretched canvas at a larger size, like the prices are ridiculous. For a stretched canvas, I buy in bulk. So I buy usually about 20 to 30 at a time and that way I'm saving money on the canvas itself. I don't I don't want I don't want to spend a lot of money. I want better quality materials, but I don't want to spend a lot of money on it. So a lot of times that's why I buy like the gallon of the self-leveling medium or... And like one billion pre-stretched canvases. Yes. And they, they get stored wherever they will fit. Yeah, wherever they'll fit. Not, there's, they don't fit in many places, but wherever I can shove them, that's where I put them. For the larger paintings, another thing is that you tend to make them deeper when yes. they're that size. And so you have control over that too. I know you can buy pre-stretched that's deeper, but I feel like once you get into deeper canvas, then the price exponentially goes up yeah, for well, pre-stretched. For, for a lot of the canvases, the larger, the like the really large pieces, I don't even buy the the stretcher bars like i make my own stretcher bars um just using two by twos shave off one side and basically just put them together as long as you're building a strong frame for your artwork um it, it's gonna it's gonna stay together and you want to have your crossbars in there too I started building canvas back when i didn't have any money to uh purchase canvas so a lot of times um, it, it was just a matter of thinking outside of the box and creating stuff with the materials that I had available to me that were uh, more inexpensive. And as it turns out, the canvases, the canvases were so good that I just kept creating them the same way. What I need when I'm creating canvas is two by two uh, pieces of wood. Just uh, They're usually about eight feet long. And I'll do the math as far as like what I need for whatever size it is that I need. And then I'll get a one by six in order to, uh, those are my stretcher bars in the center, uh, to, to basically hold the thing still. Now, the difference with my canvas and like, let's say store-bought canvas is that you have to make sure that you're putting the canvas on there taut because, uh, you, there's, there's no way to stretch it out even thicker. I mean, you can, but uh, it would be much more of a pain in the ass. You'd actually have to take the corners apart and stuff like that. So I always make sure that my canvas is stretched really, really well. So one of the first things I do is I cut 45 degree angles in the corners and make sure that the lengths are exactly the same on both sides, on each side of, of whatever the length is for that particular side. And then what I do is I drill just these half holes in the corner in order to not split the wood when I'm putting a screw through there. So then I put all four corners together and because they are cut at a 
45 degree angle, I make sure that they are flush one against the other. And that way that gives me a perfect square. Uh, I don't spend too much time trying to measure out and make sure that the corners are right because eventually, because it's a 45 degree angle, which is why you got to make sure that you are cutting it at a 45 degree angle, it is going to be a 90 degree angle corner. Then what I'll do is I'll measure out the center and what kind of stretch, what kind of bar I need in the center. And I'll put the bar on the longest side and that pretty much gives the whole piece the stability that it needs. I've had like really big pieces where I've done a four, like two bars, one on each side. But uh, for for any for things that aren't that big or that are big, but they're not like super giant, you don't really need that because it is a two by two. A lot of times you'll get the that corner, that corner gets flush and it goes in there. And what happens when you paint on that, which I don't mind because for the longest time I didn't do this next step. Um, but what happens is that you start to you, you kind of see the indentation of the wood under the canvas. So what I've been doing more recently with my pieces is I have a router and I route out the centerpiece and just give it that angle. And once I'm done uh, doing the routing on that, and trust me, when you are routing out the center, you want to make sure that this thing is uh, secure. So I usually just secure it with two screws to whatever surface it is that it's on. And then I go in there and I route out the center. Uh, then when I'm done with that, basically the stretcher bars are done. They are ready to be stretched. So back in the day when I couldn't afford actual canvas, what I would use is the thicker painter's tarp without the, the plastic backing that they sell at the hardware store. And I would use that because that's canvas. And basically what I would do is just grab that raw canvas and put it on my stretcher bars. And a lot of times... Uh, I made my own gesso with like different paints or I just didn't gesso the piece or whatever it was. Uh, this particular piece, I am stretching an actual primed canvas on it. So this canvas is pre-primed, which is honestly a little bit of a pain in the ass because you can't really pull on it all that much. And then the corners themselves, I'll do a fold over so that they're nice, neat corners. And that's it. That's pretty much how I stretched my canvas. When I first started doing uh stretching my own canvas um i didn't keep those things in mind so i actually had a customer who had bought a piece loved the piece but he said that during the summertime his painting sagged a little bit and then during the winter time it would tighten up so, so it would change with the seasons but not in the way that you want it to yeah oh. yeah luckily it was several years later so that was something that i had run into already so then i put the crossbars in order to keep it nice and taut that's one thing to keep in mind when you're stre when you are stretching your own canvas you want to make it really tight and there is a proper way of doing it a Bas technique yeah you're basically going from opposite ends and opposite ends because you want to stretch it evenly yeah um but really, like, that's one of the reasons that for smaller pieces, like, that's such a pain in the butt. Like, I don't want to spend time stretching a small little piece. Yeah, um, don't reinvent the wheel if in labor it's going to cost more than the darn thing. Exactly. And that's <laughs> that's something to consider when you're looking at pricing for canvases. Like, in labor, am I going to spend this much time and thus you know, I got to add that price in or can I just buy a pre-stretch for this much? So determine what's worth it for you. Build a strong foundation for stretching your canvas two by two. Yep. Yep. Uh, I've actually run into artists that, you know, they stretch their own canvas no matter what. And uh, they'll even say like, I don't use staples. Uh, I don't mm. use staples. I use tacks because that is the proper way of whatever. And like, listen, I'm not, I'm not putting those people down. Uh, but honestly, uh, when you look at some of the great masters and stuff, they were working with materials, especially out of necessity. And so one of the reasons we use prime canvas is because they were used to painting on wall. When you have gesso on there, it kind of gives it that same effect and you're able to like, uh, sand it down and get a nice smooth surface. Um, and honestly, some of them just gessoed wood. Uh, some of them experimented with different materials. Some of them stretched canvas and would uh, have to sew the pieces of canvas together and thus a thick layer of gesso needed to go on. So like there's a lot of a lot of uh, ideas out there of what the right way of doing something is. 
The only thing I suggest when you're stretching your canvas is that you make sure that it's tight and you make sure that if it is a big piece that you have crossbars, keep in mind that you do get some stretching and shrinking and stuff like that. That's the only thing. Whether or not you use tacks, staples, or whatever, it's the back part of the painting. As long as it's on there securely and the canvas isn't just going to snap off of there, um, in my opinion, you're fine. I'm a big fan of staples. Like when we built those giant fabric panels for the art installation, I can't even imagine if I had to tack all that oh, jazz in. Goodness, no. It, it's, it's just there is traditionalist ideas that says that what came before is the right way of doing it. When in reality, the old masters didn't use staples because they didn't have staples. Yeah, they didn't have staple guns or staplers. Being a real artist has nothing to do with what doing what somebody else did. It's, it's evolving and seeing what kind of new materials are out there and experimenting. Every single person in history, that's what they did. Mm -hmm. They experimented with new materials. There were new types of canvases. There were new types of things that they could use. Uh, even doing screen printing and all that stuff, that was all new technologies that, that a lot of artists innovated with and did. And I feel like stretching your canvas, that that's pretty much the same thing. It's It's a personal choice. Whether or not you want to stretch, maybe you don't want to stretch the big ones and you just want to buy them and don't care about the price. In that case, yeah, by all means, just buy it. It's way easier to buy a pre-stretched canvas than having to stretch the damn thing. It's quite a bit of work. To stretch a canvas it really is it is and you know anytime that i stretch a canvas then there's areas where like there's a little bit of sag and then i gotta pull the staples out and then restretch it but in my opinion it's easier when you have bigger canvases to stretch and honestly it's a little bit more gratifying because you stretch this big canvas and then you stand there and you look at this big canvas that you stretched versus uh the little tiny canvas and you're like "Ooh, i stretched this little thing again it's just my opinion on my experience and and that's it so basically you decide and if you want to do things in a historical way because you're into it then do it absolutely and so do you do you <laughs> Do you when it comes to it. Uh, everybody's going to have a different opinion on that. Uh, develop your own opinion. Thanks for your question, Andy. This was fun. Yeah, Andy, that, that, that was uh, it was interesting uh, going back and thinking about that whole process. Because I know that in the beginning, like, this was a question that I struggled with uh, until I realized, like, who, who the F cares? Like, whether or not I stretch my canvas or I don't stretch my canvas, like... It's not about, like, what kind of canvas is that? Like, it's it's about what you're creating. It turns out that most art buyers don't give a rip when you're like, they and don't. I stretched it myself, and they're like, mm, uh, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm curious to know, you know, uh, what you guys think about stretching, whether or not you stretch your own canvas, or you buy pre-stretched canvas, or you do a little bit of both like I do. Um, yeah, just put your opinions in the comment section below. Do not get into any like art stretching canvas arguments about it because really it's not worth it. It doesn't matter, you guys, really. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Quee. Good day. Adios.